Now that we can measure things, what do we do with this info? Examples are pretty helpful, so we're gonna start here. This is the front door to the house, this is a closet, and we have a burning need to have a piece of wood which is fitted exactly to the contour right here. So we're gonna drop the laser scanner <laughs> in here, and we're gonna scan it around, give maybe 300 degrees of information, and then what we wanna do is take that data, bring it down to a cross section, extract a contour, and then do something with that to allow us to, to make our piece of wood, and then we can test fit it and prove out if this works or not. Let's take a look at our scan data. So we ran it through our Python script, do an import, get it flipped around the right way. It looks promising on first pass. We've got our doors over here. You can see the louvers. Things seem reasonable. Got some weird artifacts on that door handle there because it was shiny. I'm just using a fixed exposure right now. I think some of that can be addressed or at least filtered out when you get a little more sophisticated. So what we want to do now is select these points and I'm aiming for just below this line here so I can get these contours but avoid these handles and the stuff there. So I'm gonna bring this part down, bring this part up, leave just a little bit of data and then what I want to do is extract a contour from these points. Set the length pretty low so that it has to pick up every little point, otherwise it was skipping over some of these parts that don't make as smooth of a line. Now we have our contour. I'm not sure why it makes this big jump there, but it's okay. So if we turn off our points, now we have, we have it. We can come down here, you can see all of those little things molding in the corner, molding over here. So what are we gonna do with this DXF? Cutting things directly is kind of difficult. If you wanna have a big CNC machine, it needs to be stiff if it's gonna do cutting. And I've just had a hard time getting the enthusiasm together to invest in one of those machines because of the cost and also just because of the space. So what I really need here is, is a big printer because I can cut these things out by hand right now for the initial proof of concept. And then even later, we haven't really talked about it in this case, but I feel like I could reduce a lot of these cuts to being straight cuts at different angles. You mark out two portions of that line, you can lay a track saw on it quite accurately and just cut along that. It just gives you a little bit more flexibility right now when I'm still trying to, to figure this out. So this is why I went for the Acro 60 by 60 This system I've been very pleased with so far. I've used it for a couple little things. I had bought stuff from them previously as well and had a good experience, so I invested in this machine. It's not the fastest or anything like that, but it seems to be quite accurate so far. The other upside to this type of machine and having it be a DIY thing is that you could, I don't see any reason why you couldn't make this an arbitrarily large system. You might need to stiffen up some of the beams if you made it twice as big, for example, but that's not that difficult. So I didn't want to commit a nice piece of plywood to it, but I stuck together some OSB things here to, to make the perimeter. So I brought that DXF into light burn. I fixed that giant jagged thing that was going across and a couple other little spots. Some of this roughness, it's fine. I'll just average that out on my own when I am cutting it out by hand. So what I'm gonna do now is run it on the laser at like 2% power, just so I can see where everything is. I'll be wearing my cool Bono goggles as well. Engraving is complete. Unfortunately, it was extremely slow because of all these little wiggles, but that required quite a bit because it can only accelerate between a certain amount between points. But we see here our features. Here's some of the molding. On the other side, we see another piece of molding. We see, this is a little dark, but up here, we see our features for the spot on the door. So we have effectively printed our profile onto here. I 
I did have a little bit of difficulty with these louvered portions because as it turns out, OSB is really not top of the market, surprise, surprise, and it would chip away and remove my mark because I tried to cut past and then go back to trim it out. So some of them I just made wedges. I have not test fit this before, so let's drop it in and see what we get. It seems like this part right here is too, too far that way, but otherwise I feel quite positive about things. So let's grab some snips and, and trim that off. Results are in and I feel quite positive about them. For some reason the features on this side were a little too far this way. Not just the corner, but also this part for these grooves, whereas those ones were in the right spot. So not sure exactly what happened there, but in terms of uh, all the other features, I mean, it fits quite well. It was partially jammed in place there. The kettlebell is just holding the door so that it stays at the same position, I guess, and, and doesn't change on me. But if you look at the border, I mean, you can see those louvers or whatever they're called fit quite well. It fits around the molding back there. A little bit of gap develops and then a bit of gap in the back, but it fits around the molding quite good against the door until we get up to here when we develop a little bit of a gap again. But I mean, I just guessed at the offsets on this thing. <laughs> it was zip tied on there with some foam tape underneath, so much flexibility. The thing was also tilted back very slightly, which I didn't want to get into the math to try and correct it for this first pass. So, you know, here we go with like a, I don't know, 80%, maybe less than 80% effort on getting that aligned in the current draft. So I feel quite good about that. I think concept has been proved. Now we have some other upgrades that we need to think about. Get the mechanism weight down so that we can transport the thing a little easier, get the angle fidelity better, and get it synchronized with the program so I know where I'm looking when I measure it. Do that range correction that some people were psyched about, so that's, that's fun to see. And then get the accuracy dialed in so that we really know all those offsets and the model is correct. So I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for watching.